Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Josh with Survive First Contact, and today I want to talk about a piece of equipment that I think you should bring with you in all of your survival packouts, whether it's in your long range go bag or in your vehicle or on your person, uh, and that's a tourniquet. Now, why a tourniquet? Tourniquets are designed to stop arterial bleeding from your extremities. Uh, if you are out there in the world and you sustain an injury to one of your extremities, your arms or legs, and that injury severs one of your arteries, the pipes that's carrying oxygenated blood to your organs in your body, your heart, <clears throat> excuse me, is now essentially pumping blood out of your body. And you only have a few minutes uh, before you run the risk of not coming back from that injury. So having a tourniquet is a critical piece of kit because if you sustain that injury with an arterial bleed, you needed a way to address that and address it quickly. So our first step, Say you're in some kind of vehicle accident and you have a crush injury, let's say it's to your arm. We'll use my forearm here, for example. So I maintain the crush injury. First step, identify where the injury is. And that's important because wherever the injury is, you need to apply pressure with that tourniquet above the injury, closer to the heart, so you constrict that artery and you stop from bleeding out. So what I'm gonna do is take my tourniquet, slide it over the extremity, Grab my running end and tighten it down. Rule of thumb for tourniquets, above the wound closer to the heart, um, we always preach high and tight, meaning as high up on the limb as you can get it and then as tight as you can get it. So once you have the tourniquet attached to your arm, Velcro secured, you're gonna take this plastic pipe tube here, which is called a windlass, and you're gonna take and you're gonna twist the windlass until the tourniquet is tight. Once it's tight, you're gonna lock it into this little U-shaped channel here, take Velcro, secure it over the top. Now, how do you know the tourniquet worked? Well, visually you're looking to see if the wound is bleeding anymore, so it shouldn't be bleeding anymore, that's one. Your other placement check, you can take your pulse distal from the wound, so away from the heart, distal, check for a pulse. If the tourniquet is tight enough and you don't see any bleeding and you don't have a pulse, that means the tourniquet is tight enough, you stop the bleeding. Now, just caution in training, tightening a tourniquet enough to stop blood flow to an extremity, it's going to be painful. Uh, so just be mindful of that when you're doing your training with your tourniquets. So that's application of your tourniquet uh, on something like an arm. My tourniquet here is prepped, meaning it was folded up here. When it's folded out, there's uh, a running tail end here, like if I run a six inch piece that's ready to go into a loop. The only difference to apply this to a leg um, it may be difficult to slide it up and over a leg, so unvelcroing it, pulling it out of the buckle, sliding it around the leg, and then running it back through is going to be what you have to do there. So that's identification of your wound, application of your tourniquet. Next, where to keep your tourniquet is just as critical as knowing how and when to use it. You need to keep your tourniquet within arm's reach of whatever it is that you're doing. So whether it's on your body armor, like your duty plate carrier here, I have it attached to the bottom uh, with some hair ties right in the center. So it's on the center of my stomach. I can grab with either hand and pull. It not a directional pull, it's just whatever way I pull, it'll break those bands and pull away. Same if you have it like on an ultralight kit here or on a belt or on the outside of your pack. Um, I prefer using hair ties uh, because they're a little stronger than rubber bands, but not so strong that you can't break them with just some decent pressure. Um, be warned that attaching them to the outside of your equipment, you do run the risk of them getting pulled off while you're out and about doing your thing. Um, if you don't want to do that, lots of companies make different tourniquet holders. If you are looking into a tourniquet holder, I suggest the plastic tourniquet holder from the Fieldcraft Survival Company. Now, the reason I would prefer their holder over anyone else's, like I said with the bands, their holder is not directional. It's essentially... Um, a plastic tube the tourniquet slides in. So you can pull the tourniquet up and out that way. However, in the moment when you're going to pull for the tourniquet, the tourniquet pouch is closed like this number in the front. And if you need to, you grab your tourniquet and you can pull from the front and the front of the pouch will open so you can pull the tourniquet away. Um, it's not suggested that you do that over and over again because you will wear out the plastic and its ability to retain that tourniquet. But if you are going to run a tourniquet pouch, and not bands like I do on the outside, highly suggest the tourniquet holder from the Fieldcraft Survival Company. Last thing I wanna cover, I have a couple different versions of tourniquets here. I have a cat 
tourniquet from the North American Rescue Company, and I have a soft tee wide tourniquet from the Tactical Medical Solutions Company. I uh, just wanted to point out a couple differences with these when you buy these. Neither of these are very expensive. Um, the cat tourniquet carried these a lot overseas on the outside of my equipment. Um, thing to point out here, Velcro on your running end, and then uh, plastic hardware. Now, what I like about the soft tee wide tourniquet from the TACMED Solutions Company is metal hardware. So obviously it's going to be more resilient, uh, less of a chance of breaking. These are This is all steel hardware, so a lot less of a chance of breaking the windlass or the buckles. And the one thing I like, well, two things I actually like about the soft tee wide. One, it's a little bit wider, meaning you have a wider surface compressing that artery, which means less pain for the patient. And two, as opposed to the running end of the tourniquet having to be passed through this buckle um, under critical stress might be difficult for you uh, to feed that through. So what I like about the soft T tourniquet, you have this clip here. All you have to do, get my hands on here, pull the running end out of the clip, like if you have to pass it around your leg as opposed to leaving the loop and sliding it all the way down your leg. If your leg is injured, you're probably not gonna do that. So you take, run your tourniquet under your leg, your buckle here, pull, and it's clipped. Pull and tighten just the same as you would any other tourniquet. So that's all I have for you today, guys. I lied. One more thing. Exposing and identifying the wound. How to just carrying a pair of trauma shears. Characterizing where that wound is is going to tell you where to put the tourniquet. If you don't have these and you come up on somebody who's injured, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Seconds matter. Get the tourniquet on. Get it high and tight. Then remove the clothing to expose the injury and adjust from there. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, cheers and stay safe out there. Like and follow on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Obviously, here when we're here on YouTube. If you haven't gone to my website yet, survivefirstcontact.com. Um, I do giveaways for survival and medical guides, abbreviated medical guides that covers tourniquets plus a lot more. And I also started a blog section up there. Uh, you can go and see what uh, my latest article is on whatever survival facet I've posted. So cheers and stay safe out there, guys. Until next time. Have a good one.